In this tutorial, we'll be using Final Cut Express, mainly because that's what I have. If you're using Premiere, Premiere Elements, Sony Vegas, it will also work in your program. The commands, however, will be different. You'll need to consult your manual for the actual instructions to do it. First, we remove the 10 frame title card from the stock footage. We mark our endpoint and then drag the footage down to position it over our desert footage. We right click on the effects clip and from the composite mode menu, we choose multiply. The white has gone away and we then resize and reposition our explosion so that it is positioned exactly where we want it to take place. However, you will notice that because of the way the transparency works, the dirt itself is somewhat transparent. So we're going to copy this footage that we have already positioned exactly where we want it and we're going to paste it right next to itself. Then we move our multiply footage up one level and slide our copy of the multiply footage underneath the first level. We go back to our composite menu and put this layer to normal. And we also turn off the level where the multiply is just to get it out of our way so that we can see what we're doing. Now we'll go to our effects bin and from the key effects file we will choose a luma key. We drag the luma key down and put it on our new level of effects. By double clicking on the luma key clip we bring up the controls for the luma key which allow us to make adjustments to just what the luma key will be removing. What we want to do is make the adjustment so the white is completely gone. In this instance I find that the sliders are best adjusted with the bottom slider at 62 and the upper slider at 22. This actually gives us a fairly decent looking explosion. However, we have lost some of the fine detail around the edges, but there's a simple way to get it back. We simply turn our multiply level back on and look at that. We have an explosion that has a solid, opaque core but all the fine detail around the edges. In this case, the dirt explosion seems to be just a little too saturated. It doesn't quite match the dirt of the background. So from our image control bin, we're going to choose desaturate, and we're going to put that effect on our upper level. What desaturate does by default is turn the image into black and white. Naturally, our luma key level underneath has remained unchanged. By double clicking on the clip, we can bring up the controls and by moving the slider downwards, we can slowly bring some color back to the upper layer of the clip until we feel that it's nicely matching the surrounding dirt. So now, boom! Hey, pretty good explosion, right? Well, not quite. To make it really grounded, to make it really seem like it's part of the scene behind it, it needs to cast a shadow. Look at these bushes. They have a shadow. Therefore, our explosion, which would naturally cast a shadow, needs a shadow in order to really ground it in the scene. What we're going to do is move these two layers up one more layer. Now we copy the luma key layer, which is our solid layer that will give us the best looking shadow. And the first thing we have to do is turn it over. Now I believe in Premiere there is an actual flip command. However, in Final Cut Express we have to go to our perspective bin and choose flop and that means you've reversed it left and right. However, the flop command does have a vertical flop option and that's what we're going to turn on. So our image is now flipped upside down. Now that you've turned it upside down you can slide it back into your timeline along with the other clips. Remember, this was a copy of a clip that you had already done a luma key on, so it's already the right size and it's more or less in the right place. It just happens to be flipped upside down and it's already transparent. However, it doesn't look much like a shadow because it still has color. Shadows have no color. We go get our desaturate key and we put it onto the clip. And this makes that clip black and white. But to make it really shadow-like, it has to be dark. So from the image control bin, we're going to get our gamma correction filter. Since it's already been keyed, it will only be affecting the dirt area. Slide the gamma control all the way up to give us a nice black shadow. And then now we have to distort the shadow so it looks more like a shadow. 
In Final Cut Express, that simply means hitting D on your keyboard, which brings up your distortion tool. And this allows you to grab corners and squish them around until you get a nice distorted image. Now looking at our background, we see that the shadows are pointing in that direction. So we need to make our shadow match by distorting it in the same direction. Most modern editing programs have a distortion tool somewhere. You just need to look it up and find out where it is. Then we position it, oh, we're right about down there. And our explosion now has a shadow. Well, almost. It looks a little bit sharp. So we're going to go up to our blur bin and we're going to choose a Gaussian blur. And we're going to throw the Gaussian blur on the clip that same clip that we've been doing everything else to. And we're going to crank that Gaussian blur way up there till the shadow is all smeary around the edges like a real shadow should be. And then finally, to keep the shadow from being too strong, we toggle the opacity levels. And this allows us to bring down the opacity of that particular clip until it looks convincingly like a shadow. And there you go. It took eight minutes of work, but it looks spectacular. And we've got an explosion in the middle of the desert.